Hello, everybody. Good morning. My name is Ricardo Cabrera. I am the uh, operations manager for the Latino Chamber of Commerce of Boulder County. And today we have Carla Collin as our guest. Carla is the coordinator, uh, the task force coordinate, coordinator, community task force uh, for Boulder County. And we're going to talk today about the Left Behind Workers Fund. Uh, but before that, Carla, welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, Ricardo. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Um, I work for Boulder County for the Community Services and um, CAP Division. I am here to talk about the Left Behind Workers Fund today, and we're hoping that uh, people in our community can be um, can get some benefit out of out of this fund. Excellent. Thank you, Carla. So with that, let's start talking about the Left Behind Workers Fund. So what, what is it and why is it important? Ricardo, the, the fund is very important and, and it came from funds from Boulder County and the city of Boulder. They assigned money to give 235 grants to community members uh, to move the local economy and to support them uh, especially the most impacted communities in the county and people in extreme need. Okay, so, so, uh, so it sounds like you guys have 235 grants that you're going to give to the, uh, the uh, at-risk community or, or the, uh, the worst off community. Um, and the idea is that they're gonna take this money and help themselves and help the community by taking this money and spending it into uh, local shops or buying whatever they need and, and uh, therefore helping increase the economy, the local economy while helping themselves. Correct, correct. Uh, we know that a lot of people have uh, lost their jobs. They've uh, been, you know, they've been very, very impacted by, by the pandemic. So we want to let them know that we are here to help them. We are here to support the community. And if they lost their job or they reduced their, their hours, they can qualify for, for these fund for these grants. Um, it's 235 grants for $1,000 each. And there is some um, pre-qualification um, processes that we have to do. But I, I feel like a lot of people in, in our in Boulder County and in our communities can qualify for these. Wow. So sounds like you guys have two hundred and thirty five thousand dollars to give um, one family or one individual at a time for a total of two hundred and thirty five grants or individuals. So uh, you mentioned requirements. Uh, tell me about that. What are the requirements in order to qualify for this grant? Yeah, as I was mentioning, it, people that are going to qualify have to um, have to have lost their jobs or reduced their hours at work. Um, don't uh, individuals or families that don't qualify for unemployment, individuals or families that don't qualify for a stimulus check, and they have to have a valid ID from the U.S. or their um, country of origin. Wow, and therefore the name. So you guys are really taking care of, of, of the left behind workers, the ones that didn't really qualify for anything else uh, that the government, the US and the federal government has given out. Um, so just to recap, you have to have either lost your law job or uh, reduced hours. You need to have some sort of valid ID, whether it's a, a US ID or any other ID from your country of origin. And uh, um, not received unemployment or any other subsidy uh, that has been offered in the past. Um, Correct. There, there is families that um, have received a, a grant before this one, and that's okay, but no more than two grants per household. Okay, so, and so you also mentioned household. So does this mean, um, is it one grant per household? Or is it, or could you have two grants in one household? Like if I have a roommate and he can apply and I can apply, but we live in the same place. That's correct. Um, you both can apply if, if you live together and you um, qualify and you have, uh, you know, lost your job or reduced hours at work that both th those two people can qualify. 
Excellent. Cool. Very nice. Well, that sounds like a great program that you guys are working with and working on. So uh, I guess my next question, my next question is, where do I apply and what does that process look like? Yes, so this process is a two step process. Uh, the first part of the process is going to start on January 25th. Um, it's two Mondays in two Mondays, I think it's it's on the 25th. Uh, the first part is to contact one of the outreach partners. The outreach partners are El Paso, um, the organization of El Paso, Jewish Family Resources and Boulder County. So any of these three organizations can uh, do a pre-screening, a pre-qualification. And if you qualify, uh, someone from these organizations are gonna refer you to a screening agency. The screening agency is gonna know that you pre-qualified and they're gonna help you fill out an application. Uh, the, the screening agencies are El Centro Amistad, El Comité de Logmont, and the Left Behind Workers Fund. Those three agency, agencies uh, can help you submit the application. And after submitting the application, it takes about a week to receive a check on the mail. Excellent, cool. So just so everybody knows, I am going to put all this information in the description right here below. So uh, you can click that description and you'll see um, the links to uh, the three organizations that take the initial application, which is El Paso Movement, uh, the Jewish Community Center uh, Family Resource Center and uh, Boulder County. Now, just to clarify, because because uh, we don't want people to lose out because they don't understand the process. It, it is a two-step process. First, you have to call the, the uh, you know, round one to make sure that you can qualify. It's like a screening process. And then once you do, they will tell you where to call so you actually apply. Um, and you're going to pick, I'm, I'm assuming, the closest one or the easiest one to you, whether it's El Centro Amistad or Comité or, uh, or Left Behind Workers Fund. But you do have to do a second step where you actually apply to, uh, to be uh, considered for the grant. Correct, Ricardo. The first part is the pre-screening where we, um, it's kind of like a checklist. We, we make sure, we ask some questions and we make sure that you uh, comply with these requirements. And then if you do, we refer you directly to, to the organizations that are submitting the applications. And um, once the, the application is submitted, then uh, you'll receive a check. Excellent. And it sounds like uh, uh, you get a thousand dollar check and it's pretty quick. Once you, once you get the application done, then you get your check pretty quick, right? Yeah, correct. It takes about a week uh, to get the check once the application is submitted. So because we are hoping that we are going to, this program is going to be very popular, might take a little longer. It might, you know, it might take a little longer for organizations to contact you to submit the application. Uh, but pe be patient and, and please uh, stay stay tuned because we are, we're going to start doing this on January 25th. Uh, mm -hmm. But we're hoping that these funds are going to go quick. We're hoping that, that people are going to take the opportunity to do it. So uh, don't forget about the date, January 25th. And you can start calling the organizations. Um, they are outreach partners now. So they can tell you if you qualify. Right. So the 25th is when you can uh, apply for the screening. But you can start calling now to make sure that you have all the documentation uh, you need you know, well in advance, because I am sure this is going to go quick. There's only 235 uh, individual grants that you have, and that's not a lot. So uh, you guys start doing your homework now, start getting prepared for uh, the 25th. And once you do, when, once the date comes, go and apply, because, you know, we want you to get in line. Now, with that, Carla, if, if uh, do you think there's going to be a possibility for more uh, grants like this in the future, knowing that you're really 235 it's not, it's not a big number considering the number of affected families. Uh, what's your opinion? Do you think maybe more later? I, 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 yeah, I would really hope so, Ricardo. If, if, this, if this program is successful, we are hoping, like I was saying, these funds were um, from Boulder County and City of Boulder, but we are hoping that with the new year, with, with new budgets and, and 
everything new now, we are going to be able to get more funds from other agencies, other cities, other governments, and hopefully we're going to be able to do this again. But we need to see how this one works, how this time goes, and if people apply and if people support this program, then we're going to be able, and it becomes successful, we're going to be able to do this again, hopefully, with, with more grants, because we know, we understand that 235 grants are not enough. There is a lot more people that qualify um, in the county, but once those 235 grants are gone, we don't know when we're going to have more funds available. So like Ricardo was saying, please be prepared, be ready. Obviously, we're going to ask, like we said, for a valid ID. We're going to ask for proof that we either you lost your job or your hours got reduced. So start getting ready with that. If you're if the business that you work for closed and they couldn't um, stay in business anymore, a letter from from your employer um, should be enough to to show and prove that you qualify. Excellent. And, and, and uh, I'm assuming all the service is going to be in English and in Spanish as well. And all the information stays private and, uh, and secure. So, uh, so, you know, this, this grant is intended for, as the name says, the left behind workers. And, uh, and please take a look at the information below and apply for this. So um, um, I, think, I think we've covered all the important questions. Carla, is there anything else that you'd like to add? No, Ricardo, I think that that's it. Just get ready. You still have like a week and a half to, to get ready with, with the proof of ID and, and documents to prove that um, you've been impacted by the pandemic and, and your income has been impacted by the pandemic. And let us know, there is a lot of us that are gonna be, um, that are volunteering to, to do the, the pre-screening and most of us speak Spanish. So just let us know if, if you don't qualify, uh, pass the voice and tell your your friends and family members that might qualify. We we can help them. Excellent, good. Well, thank you, Carla, for all the great work that you do, uh, and to CAP, the CAP program in Boulder County. I know they do great great things over there. And uh, happy New Year! And before we go, I have one surprise question for you. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> all right. Here it goes. What motivates you? <laughs> um, does it have to be only one thing or it can be a lot it could be a lot because there is a lot of things there is a lot of things that motivate me um, I want to say that the first one is that I want to be the best uh, best version of myself um, every day and my family of course and, and those are the, the two main ones Beautiful. Those two are great motivators and they are uh, put you on a path to success. So thank you for that. And with that, uh, thank you everybody for being here and until next time. Thank you, Ricardo. Bye-bye everyone.